A fresh batch of spores can be released after each rain or irrigation event. The Perithesia are most productive from late winter through the season until late autumn. The spores need to land on an open wound on the vine, usually one created by pruning. The wood needs to be older than two years and the larger the pruning cut, the more likely it is to become a target. Wounds from one-year-old wood are not susceptible to infection. Spores that reach an open wound enter the vessels where they germinate and grow down through the xylem elements in the central trunk tissue. From there, the fungus slowly grows out radially within the trunk as well as down towards the roots. During the early stages of fungal growth, there are no obvious symptoms on the vine. It is not until Utipa is well established that symptoms appear, usually at least two years after infection occurred. The most obvious symptoms of Utipa are the stunted shoots, which appear during the early growth period. The poor growth is a result of a toxin produced by the fungus and the stunted foliage does not actually contain any fungus. A range of symptoms can appear, including stunted growth, short internodes, small and often cup leaves, pale yellow leaves often with small necrotic areas, leaves with dried up margins, poor development of flower clusters, poor fruit set, these symptoms may be expressed on part of a vine only or across a whole vine. The other major symptom is the development of dead tissue or cankers in the trunk or cordon. To see this, the bark and outer wood need to be scraped away below the infection point. This is often a sharply defined dark brown margin between the dead and living wood. Below a well-healed wound, the tissue does not die back. When cordons and trunks are cut in cross-section, a wedge-shaped dead area is clearly seen. Sections close to the point of an old infection show that the majority of the tissue is dead and only a small amount alive. As the sections progress towards the base of the vine, the dead section becomes distinctly wedge-shaped and eventually at the base of the vine, the Utipa infected tissue disappears and only healthy wood remains. Utipa symptoms generally persist throughout the season, although the weak portions of a vine may become obscured by the vigorous growth from adjacent healthy portions as the season progresses. The best way to avoid problems associated with Utipa is to prevent the disease from becoming established in the vineyard in the first place. In most instances, Utipa enters through large pruning wounds created either during retrellising or reworking operations. A number of actions can be taken to avoid Utipa infection. Select periods of dry weather for any pruning or vine removal involving large cuts. This avoids periods when spores are likely to be dispersed. Treat large pruning wounds immediately to prevent the development of any Utipa spores that may enter. Adding a vegetable dye shows where the treatment has been applied. Remember that treatment after spores have entered the vine will not be effective. Any older wood pruned from the vine should be removed from the vineyard and burnt. Minimise the need to rework or retrellis by selecting appropriate varieties and trellises when initially setting up the vineyard. Dr. Morris Carter outlines the management options available to growers. When we look at the options for management, uh, they narrow down quite a bit. Now, theoretically, as we teach students of plant pathology, or we used to, uh, you have first of all sanitation, you clean up the sources of uh, inoculum or where the infection is coming from, that's great in theory and certainly uh, it's a good principle. The sources which are close to you right there in your vineyard or in your next door neighbours, they're, they're the most potent sources and most likely to be troublesome. Then you have uh, modification of pruning uh, systems where we aren't uh, 
too many options there. This uh, has settled down pretty much to a pattern largely uh, dominated by mechanical pruning systems in the vineyard industry, which I think may be to the advantage of the industry in minimising this disease because, as I understand it, there's not too many large cuts in older wood made in routine pruning of vineyards. The aim really is to take off the annual growth. But now and then, as I understand it, these machines are set in more tightly and they do a harder pruning, perhaps once every three or four years or something like that, and then you would certainly need to, to look out if they were cutting into older wood and creating infection opportunities. Now, the only other options really remaining are uh, chemicals. There are chemicals. Some chemicals have been shown to be very, very effective indeed in uh, preventing infection from taking place, provided, provided, and this is absolutely critical here, they must be put on at the time of pruning, not a couple of days later or a week later, because you may get rainfall the next day, and rainfall brings spores, and once spores are in, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't have any uh, retroaction uh, preventing them from developing. And you cannot do this by any sort of uh, currently available pruning uh, spraying equipment. It just does not deliver the required dose. You must deliver a drenching dose which will actually penetrate into the uh, wood cells exposed at the wound surface and carry the chemical right in. You don't need a high concentration of the chemical you must be able to really carry it in to where those spores eventually finish up and uh, uh, germinate. Vines that have existing infections of Utipa can only be treated by removing the entire disease section of the vine. If the disease has progressed to the base of the trunk, then it may be impossible to eliminate the disease and the vine should be completely removed. It's most important to cut back below any sign of disease wood to remove all trace of utipa. Often this can mean going back to ground level and selecting a sucker to retrain into a new vine. Some growers are able to train up a sucker and establish a cordon before cutting out the disease portion of the vine. Any large pruning cuts must be treated immediately to prevent reinfection by utipa. The hazard is older wounds, larger wounds in older wood. Uh, these are certainly very susceptible. Again, the susceptibility diminishes qu quite quickly with age of wound of the order of two to four weeks. Wounds older than that uh, are just virtually no longer uh, open to infection. Yes, in my opinion, it's a bit of a, a time bomb. Uh, a lot of the old timers recognise it as a disease, but you know, as more and more new people have come into the industry, I guess some of these haven't recognised uh, the significance of the problem because the disease takes uh, so long to develop. Therefore, it was even more crucial that we didn't lose this because this is our premium product and we can't afford to uh, allow this to disappear. Hence the uh, diligence and uh, continuing diligence that we will uh, keep an eye on it and I'd say it'll be forever. But you know, we, we're very happy with our rate at this point of time. Utipa is a latent disease, the symptoms of which may not show up for some years after infecting a vine. The critical components for the development of the disease are a source of spores, weather conditions favourable for the release of the spores, and a large recently made wound on a grapevine for the spores to enter. Utipa is one disease where the focus should be on preventing it getting into a vineyard. Once Utipa is established in a vineyard, the cure can be quite drastic, very expensive, and is seldom completely effective. 